If you never let go of your frustration with something that isn't going perfectly in your marriage, that's a recipe for bitterness and estrangement, not a happy life. As a pastor, I live in the real world and I work with real couples. And I have to be honest that sometimes one of the greatest frustrations of marriage is if you're married to someone who just doesn't want the same thing out of marriage that you do. I can't pretend that it's the same when you have two people who are pursuing deeper intimacy or two people who are living under life in Christ the same way. So what do you do if you're in a relationship with someone who's happy to be more superficial and just live on the surface? The reality is that building a marriage together isn't like fixing a car a living person working on an inanimate being, it does require two people who are pursuing each other. But there's hope for those of you who are in that frustrating situation. One, we have to recognize the spiritual benefits of being in this situation. Jesus specifically says in Luke 6, 32 and following, when he defines love, that he excels and we are to excel in loving, quote, the ungrateful and the wicked. He says, if you love someone who loves you back, that's not love as he defines it. If you do good to those who can do good to you, he says, that's how the world operates. He's calling us to a love where we can love someone who's ungrateful and someone who hurts us. So we recognize I may not be getting what I want out of my marriage, but spiritually, there's some real benefits to that love. You know, giving to get is the world's view of love, but it's not Christ's. On another practical level, one of the things we need to do is you can get those needs met secondarily through appropriate channels. By that, I usually mean same gender friends or getting together with other couples. If you really want to have deeper conversations and your spouse really isn't into that, well, get together with other couples and then your spouse can more just tangentially participate in that. If you really enjoy those movies, you can do it with someone else. Your spouse isn't a church. You won't have all of your needs met by one person. Another very helpful thing is to choose to dwell on the positive. That's what we're called to do in Scripture, particularly in Philippians 4.8, when he says that we should choose, we choose to think about what is honorable. We choose to think about what is right, what is lovely, what is of excellence. We don't want to define our spouse by how they disappoint us. We want to consciously define our spouse by how they delight us, recognizing that there aren't any pure and, and completely satisfying spouses out there. Here's the reality. If you never let go of your frustration with something that isn't going perfectly in your marriage, that's a recipe for bitterness and estrangement, not a happy life. You may not have the marriage you always dreamed of, but you can have a better marriage if you take these positive attitudes and seek God's best in that situation. 